Hi, my name is Doris Vitok and this is weekly update number three. I know it's coming a little late, uh, but then again, who's seriously obsessive with clicking on my YouTube page saying she has an update on Sunday, now it's Monday, now it's Tuesday. Okay, if you're seriously doing that, I'm really creeped out. Uh, I think the majority of people watching this won't mind that it's been a little more than a week since the last one. I'm hoping. Let me know if you really do care and I'll make sure I do it better next time. But this week has been super hectic. You probably already know why I'm not going to have another weekly update filled with TEDx Redmond, but TEDx Redmond is like pretty much my life right now. So, um, <laughs> I was seriously about to quote, um, what was it? Oh yeah, this has absolutely no relevance whatsoever because, um, yeah, well anyway, Queen Elizabeth II once said about like why she wasn't getting married, that she was married to England. Well, nobody's offering me a hand in marriage anytime soon, but I'm like pretty much married to Ted X Roman right now, and yeah, that sounds super disturbed, so. But I think that I totally understand how people get sucked into their work because it gets kind of addictive, and uh, really there's always something new to be done, which is great. I love organizing events. I love being part of a TEDx event. Um, the great part of being part of a TEDx event versus other events is that you get to watch lots and lots of TED videos and pass it off as doing work when really you're just watching TED videos and saying that you're curating your event. Well, you are, because we do have to show a certain number of TED videos, but of course that's really part of what makes it enjoyable. So today, my favorite TED video of the day is one that my mom actually suggests to me. Uh, as with anything that comes out of my mom's mouth, I was initially extremely skeptical. Yeah, sorry mom, I love you, you're great. She's filming this, so I regret just saying that. But if you go to TED.com, it's the one with iPods. Actually, it's an amazing talk. I'm not going to show it to you because because what's the point of watching a TED talk on video on a screen film? That just doesn't make any sense. But it's Marco Tempest, The Magic of Truth and Lies and iPods, and I cannot sum it up. You have to go there and watch it. And the best part is it is short, so you can just watch this while you're on your lunch break or something and pretend to be working. So it's an awesome video. There's all the TED, TEDx Roman stuff. Oh, by the way, Microsoft is actually a really awesome company. Um, <laughs> Okay, so the reason I'm just suddenly saying this is because they're giving us the Microsoft Conference Center to use for the TEDx Roman event, plus they're providing free meals for our lovely, selectively selected audience. And um, when I say selectively, selectively selected, I mean that um, we are, oh, where is the, okay, tedxroman.com slash register. You'll notice that we want you to jump through a couple of flaming hoops before we let you come to our beloved conference. So you do have to answer uh, this very difficult question, why do you want to attend TEDx Redmond with a proper amount of please let me in enough, and we will do our best. So to give you a sense of what I really look for in attendee, my favorite responses have been the ones where people say that they go build schools in Lesotho and the people who say, oh, I started volunteering at a women's shelter and donating in the Kiva and um, the ones who say TEDx Drummond inspired me to do this or I've seen the videos, you know, you know what I mean, people who really take action as a result of what they see at TEDx Drummond or who say I want to go to TEDx Drummond to enable me to help my community, etc. Because if you want to go to TEDx Redmond for the free food or to hang out with your friends, that's um, really what a mall is for. So that's enough of my little rant about TEDx Redmond, how an uh, awesomeness of Microsoft, and now on other things. Another thing happened actually really more last week. I wrote a blog post on the Huffington Post that received 2,026 comments as of last uh, checking. And of course, um, the reason that this blog post received so many more comments than usual, uh, and I was really complaining about this. I was like, God, why there's a blog post that I wrote and it's not even my favorite blog post. Why does it have to get so much more attention and comments and get featured on AOL um, instead of my my blog post about history, which I personally thought I had a lot more clever metaphors in. Well, anyway, long story short, the blog was about girls' clothing choices and, um, well, it's not as job as that, it's basically um, the marketing of clothes to girls. Look at the poster at any Abercrombie & Fitch or Hollister or even JCPenney and you'll see that a lot of the uh, clothes marketed towards teenage girls are really um, overly grown up, you might say. So take a look at the blog post to find out what I'm talking about. Uh, so it received quite a lot of circulation. People were tweeting about it, Facebooking it, 2,026 comments. But you know the awesomest thing is that all of my videos that I'm making about politics and such are really divisive because I'm saying like, oh, rich people should be taxed. And of course, you know, that's not great with the Republicans. So being a Democrat myself, you'd think I would get into hot water with this. But this issue of um, girls' clothing and the um, overall evilness of selling push-up bras to young teenagers uh, seems to have united Democrats and Republicans alike, so it's like family values meets 
oh my god, evil company sort of mentality. I'm on the evil companies, but, you know. Uh, so, I'm glad that there's at least one issue the left and the right in our country can agree on, and that's that girls should not be wearing clothes that um, are really um, inappropriate in every sense of the word. And I mean that not from a, like, really patriarchal, oh my god, you shouldn't be wearing that sort of attitude, but it is ridiculous when you look at the clothing options that girls have these days. So, read the blog post, disagree with me if you want, but uh, I, I love that of the 2,000 comments, there were some pretty interesting things in there. I'm also surprised by how many comments. I would see, like, 60 pending comments, and then only 10 of them would get posted, which really creeps me out because I don't want to know what those people were saying that would, like, the Huffington Post wouldn't post their comments, but okay, I just um, definitely ranted way too much about my blog post. But that's what's been going on this week, getting the Microsoft Conference Center for TEDx Redmond, writing a blog post that got a lot of attention, complaining that that blog post got attention versus my other blog posts, so make sure you check out my more educational ones about history, about, um, well, about education. You know, the education section of the Huffington Post is an awesome resource. So, um, in other news, I'm also making more writing videos. I've been trying to um, do some videos about uh, descriptive writing, among other things, recently. And uh, what else? Am I traveling? No, I'm not traveling, thank God, for the uh, time being. I'm, it's a lovely feeling being at home for, like, two months, three months straight. No, and that sounds ridiculous, but I love traveling, but, you know, sometimes last year my family went on this big two-month trip around the world that we, we went from... Uh, here to Mexico, Mexico to, um, oh god help me here, uh, Mexico to, okay you can tell I travel way too much, we went from, oh yeah we went from Mexico to Nice, Nice France, and from Nice to Milan, and from Milan to Lugano Switzerland, and from Lugano back to Milan, and then from Milan to Dubai for eight hours where we had a tour with some very lovely people, uh, and then from Dubai to Mm, uh, not Mumbai, no, Dubai to New Delhi, and New Delhi to Mumbai, and Mumbai to Lavaza, India, and Lavaza back to Mumbai, and Mumbai to Colombo, Sri Lanka, and Colombo to Badi Kaloa, where I was working with the World Food Program, and that is another one of my favorite blog posts that I wrote for them. If you go to WFP.org, that's worldfoodprogram.org, um, awesome organization. They're doing so much great work in Somalia right now. I wrote a blog post about my experience um, seeing their school feeding program there in Sri Lanka, and um, that was definitely a very life-changing experience. So my blog post about that is at wfp.org if you click on students and teachers, uh, and you should be able to find my blog post there. So then from Sri Lanka, we went back to Mumbai, and from Mumbai, Dubai, Dubai, San Francisco, San Francisco, Seattle, and back home we were, and that we managed to do five days before Christmas, so everyone's home getting their presents. But that was some whirlwind trip. And oh, and then after that, we went to Florida, we went to Switzerland again. Um, so, and uh, we went somewhere else, Montana. Yeah, so you can see, I'm like, when you get travel amnesia, you know that you know you need to stay home for three months. So, uh, I'm not going to be traveling until October, which is actually pretty awesome because I'm going to be taking two classes at my local uh, regular school, so that'll also be, you know, it'll be a bit hard to balance biology and AP art history while traveling, although I'm not going to, like, let that restrict me from traveling. So, yeah, I've just talked too, way too much and given any potential stalkers a lot of information, not that I have any. Thanks for your concern and <laughs> um, probably revealed way too much about um, my talking habits, so now you know why I speak to a camera. The rest of my family can't stand me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, thank you very much for listening to this weekly update, and uh, I swear my next one will actually be written out and a bit more organized. Thanks.